Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. This is where I take a deep dive look into a particular creator, a particular topic, a particular trick, uh, whatever it may be, and I just kind of shine a light on it. And one thing I like to do in the review show specials is from time to time shine a light on uh, products that have come out recently that maybe have flown under the radar or less people are aware of. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be doing this week. I'm going to be doing a review show special on two John Archer routines. Now, John Archer is one of my favourite magician, stroke mentalist, stroke comedy performers of all time. I have been a huge John Archer fan for years. His Penguin Live, in my opinion, is one of the best Penguin Lives that they've ever done. Uh, DVDs like Further Education and uh, uh, Blindfold Tips and Educating Archer are just absolutely incredible. And, you know, I think Blank Night has become the go-to Bank Night effect for every magician around the world. The point is, John Archer is a legend. Now, he is also a very busy performer. That's what makes him such a good uh, creator of magic. Because when John releases something to the magic community, it's not like he's just created it to release. He only releases something that he's created for his own purposes. And he's got to a point where he thinks, well, you know what? I think this might benefit other people as well. But because it's a double-edged sword, because he's so busy performing and he's so busy, kind of, and he is, I mean, you check his, uh, his socials out, he's so busy. Uh, you know, he performs at uh, events literally all over the world. He, not just with magic and comedy, uh, but also, you know, he's currently doing a Buddy Holly thing, Big Buddy Holly, which looks incredible. The point is, he's a very busy guy. He doesn't release as much material these days as he has in the past it's been quite a while since he's released anything well what's super exciting is he's just bought out two new products and these have flown under the radar of people for a couple of different reasons the first reason is john hasn't pushed them really hard other than making a post on his socials and a post on the magic cafe they've not gone into murphy's so a lot of people aren't aware of them unless you've actually following john archer around like i do like a crazy stalker that i am um, and, uh, you know, they're ebooks, and these days ebooks aren't as popular as downloads because you have to actually do this thing called reading, which is terrible, right? Uh, so all those factors put together means that these have flown under anyone's radar, but for me, I just know that anything John Archer puts out is golden. So I got the, uh, I got the ebooks, uh, thought they were fantastic and wanted to shine a light on them to tell you guys that these are something that if you do magic or mentalism, it's something that you should actually include in your, um, uh, it should be something you should include in your act. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick interview with John. So I'm going to, I'm going to swing over uh, to like a mini 20 minute interview that I did with John. Uh, he's going to talk about the two new ebooks. So he's going to talk about why he created them, what they are, and then we're going to come back into the studio and give them a full review and a performance. So let's start off with uh, the interview with John Archer. So I am super excited because fresh off the stage at Blackpool, I am here with everybody's favorite magician and mentalist and comedian, singer, songwriter, showman extraordinaire, everything all wrapped up into one package, the one and only John Archer. How are you doing, my friend? Very well. You love everybody, do you? I love your introduction because everybody you introduce, you love them, and then the best there is. And every single one of them is flattered by it. I go, oh, thank you so much. I'm going, he says it to everybody. <laughs> but it's so true. I mean, you, you are so talented. It makes me sick because, you know, I've been watching very quickly before we talk about the review. Yeah. You've been doing this Buddy Holly thing recently, right? I've been oh, watching. That, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's sort of a. It's a bit of a mad hobby that's sort of slightly out of control. But yeah, I've been doing big Buddy Holly and the Crockettes. It looks super fun. Like, it looks amazing. It is, it is, man. It's me with an American accent and a, a rock and roll wig and glasses um, singing Buddy Holly songs with an electric ukulele. And uh, yeah, it's hard to explain. I don't know why it happened or where it's going or, or you know, if it'll go anywhere. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just it's good fun. You know, mag magic's my job, but I thought th this has turned into a bit of a crazy hobby that's gotten slightly out of control. 
Um, I don't think it'll go far, to be honest. You just have to listen to me singing to realise it's not going to go a long way. But uh... Please tell me we're going to see you back on BGT one year, but instead of John Archer, the magician, it's going to be John Archer, the Buddy Holly impersonator. You know what? I did consider that. and I, I, I did, when Barney was at uh, Blackpool, I did sort of mention to him, I said I could come on as Big Buddy Holly. Uh, and I don't think he was kidding about the He said, I think everybody would recognise you. Um, but I do look very different with a wig and glasses on. I could do a bit of a spellman, couldn't I? Go back on there, as Big Buddy Holly, and then reveal at the end, ha! I'm really magician. <laughs> this was all a ruse to get me to the final. And now, watch the handkerchief. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I must admit, I, I really enjoyed my experience on Britain's Got Talent. So I, I'd quite happily just enter just for the fun of being involved again. It was just... Uh, it was it, it was an incredible both acts were incredible i mean they really were and i think that you're responsible for more sales of astonishing bottle than than any magic dealer put together i mean <laughs> yeah no it was uh yeah that, that was a good it was a fun little routine uh, i enjoyed it and that you know and it's uh it's a nice experience britain's got talent now it's changed a lot um you know, so uh, I, I would recommend anybody to sort of give it a try, uh, just just for the fun of it. You got nothing to lose. Absolutely, absolutely, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Mm. But I want to talk to you about two very particular things because here's the thing: I remember when Educating Archer came out and uh, Further Education and the Blindfold Act, and uh, and you you were releasing loads of magic through Alakazam and really strong material. It was like working. <laughs> My Lord, very, very quickly is what you're trying to say. Well, you then brought out Collard and then you did your Penguin Live. And I've got to tell you, I mentioned the Penguin Live to you just before we went on camera because I've just done one. One of my favourite routines that I do in my show is your handling of the magic square that you did in your Penguin yeah. Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, brilliant. But uh, And then obviously Vanishing Ink with Blank Knight, that was after Penn and Teller, and you bought various different things out over the years, streets, I'm, I'm a big fan of all your material, as you know, but you've, you've had a hiatus from releasing Magic for a few years now. I have, yeah, mainly because I haven't really, everything I, I tend to release is stuff that I create for myself and I genuinely really want to do, and then I think, oh, well, people might be interested in it, and, you know, I think releasing stuff is a good idea because I wouldn't know all the stuff I'd done if other magicians in the past hadn't released it. So I have that thing that, you know, pay it back and, you know, let people know what I've come up with and all of that sort of thing. But just sort of over the last sort of five or six years, I haven't really cre created a lot of new stuff. I've done a few new things, but they're just, they're just routines that exist. And I'm slightly not, I haven't changed them enough to justify releasing anything. I've just come up with my own routine. Um, but yeah, these are a couple of things that um, uh, I've played around with. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I just thought that, well, they're not really something I don't think dealers would be interested in uh, in doing. So I just thought I'll release them as PDFs. So yeah, I thought I'll just put them on my website and see if people are interested. And and that's why we're here. Yeah, creating a big fuss about them, really. It's sort of... Well, I, I'm obviously, that's what this interview is all about because I am going to be reviewing them. And I'm telling you right now, and I haven't mentioned this to them. you. Huh? You hate them. <laughs> no, I love them. But the 311, yes. uh, three thoughts, one billet, one envelope. Yes. I think that the main, obviously, you've got a bonus handling as well in there, which is really clever. But the main gimmick that you describe that people make yours, themselves, yeah. I could see somebody like Vanishing Ink making that up without having people to do the arts and craft and following, it's not a difficult thing to make, I made it, and I'm rubbish at making gimmicks, but I could see, you say that dealers wouldn't be interested in it, I think, and I'm, I'm gonna make a bold statement here, I think this is one of the, if not the best peak devices I've ever seen, it's so clever, because it changes the moment of the peak, it's, it's kind of like normally the peak is done at one moment, in this case, you give them a, a business card or something to write on. It's yeah. put in an envelope. You can be looking away. You give them the envelope immediately with your back turned. You, 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 they put their hands on it. Everything gets put away and you instantly know. Yeah. It's incredible. It's such an amazing... I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, and, and uh, basically it's a combination of about three or four different ideas all into, all in, all into one. So, um, you know quite often you can you can place a thing in the envelope but then you've got to do other stuff with the envelopes or uh, or whatever um 
it is it is very very clean and it, it's very very workable <laughs> both of the methods uh, that the, the main reason i came up with it is um mentalism is full of process mentalism is lots of process and and the hard thing when making mentalism entertaining is making that process entertaining so if you can not, if you can get rid of as much process as possible then then you've got more time to, to present the the fun part of the routine you know why you're doing it and dealing with the people um and and that sort of fourth dimensional telepathy thing which was an animan you know the animan thing of you know three three thoughts in three different envelopes now, i like that concept but it's you've got to have three things written three envelopes three envelopes you know dealt with and held and opened and sealed and whatever and i just thought if you could get it down to one business card you know and one envelope uh, but but the three thoughts written on, on that one on that one card, you, you've got the same effect. You've got three people. You can reveal a name. You can reveal a number, and then do the final one. Do a drawing duplication, and there's just one card and one envelope in play. You've got rid of all of that process, yeah. uh, and it, so then your you, your presentation is all presentation. You, you've got you've got one moment to deal with, and then the rest is all presentation. Um, so that was the main reason for coming up with those two methods and, and both methods work for that type of routine um so yeah so that that's where it came around it was just me getting frustrated with loving a routine but hating all the process that went with it and 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 the thing that struck me from reading the pdf and actually creating the gimmick um is that it works as well for close-up and walk around and sort yeah. of intimate situations as it does do on stage it's the sort of thing that you can build a big stage piece around and i know you do by having three people on stage and make it play really big but it's also something you can do in a group of three or four people and there's no angle issues to speak of at all uh, it's not difficult it's pretty much self-working uh you can reset it in seconds um it's it just ticks all of the boxes really when it comes to a commercial piece of of close-up magic yeah yeah, I mean, I actually do it with two people in the audience and the final person uh, on stage with me because I like the sh the shape it makes. So uh, Paul Daniels years ago used to talk about creating shapes in your act. I don't know if you ever heard him talk about that, and I've heard it spoken about by other people. So that you know, one shape you create is um, you and a spectator on the audience, you know, and then another one it might be a person either side of you, and you create that shape, and then you know you might have four people up on stage and you, so you create a different visual shapes with each routine so it's not you with a person stood next to you they sit down another person stood next to you they sit down it's creating different dynamics tossed out deck three people in the audience and you yeah you know, so they all create different shapes um so i tend to do it um with two people in the audience and one person up on stage because that's a different dynamic to all the other routines i do um and it you know rather than three people up on stage with me i mean you can do it anyway but uh it, when you've only got one envelope in play, you just need one person up to hold that final envelope, um, which you can deal with at the end. And I, I, I talk about that in the PDF. But yeah, it's um, it, you know, it's a, it's a nice little piece. And then obviously, you know, we've alluded to it, but there's a second bonus, or no, not really a bonus handling, because it's it, you've got two methods to achieve the same thing. Um, yeah. The second method is closer in line to what you wanted to achieve because having read the pdf your original yeah, goal was to have one envelope wasn't it yeah there's no stack of envelopes there is just one envelope with the second method and also the second method um you know it, if you think about it, it could be used for lots of other things it could be used for placing a side bill you know in the envelope and seal mm. and your hands empty and then whenever you need to that can be that envelope you've given away you've stolen the envelope and You've stolen the bill, but the envelope can be examined. There's nothing to see. So you sort of place it in um, and then you can steal it out at any point and hand the envelope to somebody. So um, it sort of acts as, almost like acts as a holdout and also uh, a method to steal or switch. Um, so creatively, it can be used more than just that um, 311 routine that I talk about. It, it could be used in a, you know, a burning, a you know burning bills in a in a series of envelopes you know like the old terry seabrook used to do and you know and then loading it to your wallet or wherever you want it could be used for a bill to impossible location method um there's a lot of options for it and again that second method 
is also something that would work in close up. Yeah, yeah, easily work in close up. Um, and what what I like what I like most about that, and, and it's difficult to talk about it without giving away what it is, because it's a ridiculously simple little, mm. but also ultra clean, is that you can place that bill in there, you can, you can lick it and seal it down, and your hands are empty you know and you can steal it out whatever you need whatever you need to in a close-up situation and that envelope is still examinable you know uh, you know as a mm. sealed envelope with, with nothing to see um so so yeah um, close-up off stage it works and uh uh yeah lots of options i, I haven't really fully um explored all the options that are available to, to use it for yet but i'm sure hopefully well, people will come up with some some good other uses for it for sure and and i think one thing to add from this that i picked up from reading the pdf is although you describe the 311 routine which is getting three people to write thoughts on one business card yeah. and and doing that once you understand both methods you could use it as a drawing duplication you could use yeah. it as anything that you wanted to you could you yeah. could use it anything at all yeah yeah i mean yeah it, it's, it's sort of a utility Switch and steal method, really. Um, Brilliant. I mean, the, the first method isn't really a steal; it's again it's a glimpse. The second method is you could use it for a glimpse and a steal. Um, you could, and between and the nice thing is the two methods are completely polar opposites of each other. Yeah. So you know, you you pick the one that works best for you, and you might find that there's a different place in your act for each one of them, depending on depending on what you're doing. It's brilliant. It's really good. I absolutely love that. And and. The second PDF, which is also available directly from you, yes. is absolutely, completely and totally bonkers. Uh, it's got John Archer Richard all over it. It's called 10 Green Bottles. Do you want to basically synopsize us and talk about what the uh, yeah. what I mean, this is all about? Basically, basically it's sort of a, a billet routine um, based around the, the, the song 10 Green Bottles, or as the Americans would have it, you know, 99 bottles of beer on the wall i think they say but but the idea of you know you're, you're predicting a particular verse um uh but it, it's just got a very motivated steal and switch that's the basic thing that you that you're getting with this and also the the routine which mm. um yeah i don't want to give too much of the routine away but it, it is just a silly way of uh of doing it there aren't many comedy sort of you know billet um index you know it's a bit oh. routine um but, but yeah but this is nice I and mean, in the right environment if you're sat in a pub with a group of people uh, and you just want to do something that seems relatively impromptu um and you know fun uh, then i think it's you know it's ideal it's great it's a great little bit it is but having said that and you know more than me i could imagine this is the sort of thing that if you wanted to you could make it play really big Oh, you know, yeah, by yeah. bringing the green bottle out on stage and having the entire audience do the thing that you're having the one person do. I don't like I said, I don't want to give away the presentation, but no, you, you could, could you could make it like a whole audience thing, really, couldn't you? You could. I, I mean, I, I personally think that the, the the method and presentation doesn't suit stage so much as it does close up. You could you could do it on stage, but I think if you're going to do it on stage, there probably um, there are probably better methods um to use to you know you could certainly do the routine but i i, I would think there were probably um more stage friendly methods that would you know play bigger now but close up it's just it's great you know small group um or par parlorish even you know i could say if you work in the parlor at the castle it would work but stage wise i think i'd probably go for a different method but yeah yeah it's um it's very practical um, yeah it's sort of what I like about it. It's devious because it's using. I, I think I mentioned it earlier before we were on camera. It the, the the presentation perfectly justifies the method that you're using. Um, yeah. You know, I, I love it when um, the method actually um, makes sense um, to the routine. R yeah, rather yeah. than all of a sudden you bring out something that's like, well, why is he using that? And the only reason you're using that thing is because you need it to do the dirty work. 
But if that thing that you bring out is part of the routine, then nobody questions it. Uh, and that's why the, the sort of 10 green bottles, you know, using the, you sort of using the bottle in effect as part of your method. Um, so, yeah, I, I, think, I think, you know, it's, it's a very simple, silly little thing. It um, is. But like I said to you off camera, the moment that the thing is happening without giving anything away is genius. I've never, I've never seen that before. And that actually has, when you understand what you, you've done here with the bottle in order to affect the routine that you have, yeah. this could have applications for card magicians with a folded up card. Yeah. Like yeah. I read it and I was like, you could actually use this same method to take a card, fold without people seeing it, fold it up, put it underneath the bottle, cover it up with a bottle, do some sort of have a card picked and signed, build the presentation in around the bottle. And then when you lift that bottle up and they they pick that uh, that folded up card up that's been under there themselves, that's going to be their signed card. Yeah, 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 you could do that. You're thinking of better ideas than I am now. Well, I, I looked at it and I was like, this is the most organic mystery box, Kennedy style mystery box I've ever seen because you could do like a Kennedy style mystery box with just a bottle <laughs> impromptu. Can I borrow that bottle? Brilliant. Awesome. Let's do something with a pack of cards. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, there's certainly tons of options. Definitely. So yeah, it's genius. It's great. I love it. I'm I priced it too low. I've priced it too low. I knew I had. You really have. You really have. But well, okay. So I'm going to review these in a minute. I'm going to let you go because I know you've got another call to get to, but before I do, yeah. Are we going to be seeing some other stuff off you in the future? Or are you going to be too busy being Buddy Holly and running around the country I've being got, a megastar? I've got a couple of things that um, I'm working on that if, if, you know, if I get them all, all the edges knocked off, I think um, one particularly nice stage routine that I think if I knock all the corners off it and get it to work, there's a few people I'd have to clear it because it's using a few other people's ideas that um, combine together. But um, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say any more about that, but I've got a few things I'm working on. Obviously, we've just had two years of doing nothing, so I sort of gone back, and even my old stuff feels new to me at the moment. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am working on some uh, new ideas just for my own sanity, really. And uh, you know, if they work and I start performing them and I'm enjoying them, then uh, they will naturally, uh, you know, if they if they are something that can be sold, I'll probably put them on the market. Just. Um, to pay back all the people who've given me material, really. Perfect. And where can people buy these, uh, John? Is it directly from your website? Yeah, at the moment, at the moment, they're just on my website. So there's a magician's page on my website, which you just go to, and you can you can click a little PayPal link, and uh, you'll get sent the PDF. So it's and uh, John Hyphen Archer dot com. John Hyphen Archer dot com. I'll put the link at the screen uh, at the bottom of the screen right now. So it's going to be down the bottom. And is there down there exactly is there is, <laughs> is there other stuff on there that you you sell as well john like do you, do you uh, yeah, yeah there's other stuff there's um uh you know, the blank night pdf is there although you can get that from vanishing ink and you get the envelopes from vanishing ink so you're probably better buying it from there to be honest uh but there's also um uh yeah some of my early lecture notes are on there um there's a few there's a few downloads that are on there that people might not have um, a comedy writing workshop that I used to do is on there as a PDF. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Well, John, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know I've had to squeeze you in today between stuff that you've got going on. So thanks for finding time to... Uh... Lots of Zoom calls that have earned me no money, but just talking about things that might. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to be. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring it back to the studio now. I'm gonna do this a full review. Uh, but it's it's amazing to seeing everybody, you know, the entire world getting back to normal and going out and working again. But especially, it was an absolute honor, and genuinely, I mean this. It was an absolute honor to see you on the stage at Blackpool. It was such a surprise. I didn't know it was gonna happen, and to see you at Blackpool you. coming out. It was gonna happen. <laughs> How, very quickly, how long, how much notice did you have on that? Because uh, it wasn't too bad. They, were, they let me know on the, I think, Wednesday, and I was travelling there on the Thursday. So I, I said, I said, yeah, I can do something, but it won't be anything new. You know, I, I just literally, I'll just have to do some John Archer standards, which is what I did. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was nice well, to see 
Sorry, I, I didn't get a chance, as with you, so many people you don't get a chance to chat with, but uh, it was nice to see them all briefly and wave from a distance or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And you smashed it as you would normally do. And it was nice to see you perform Streets live. I've never seen you do that live before. So that was yeah, that was yeah. great. Good. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So I don't know when I'll see you next. Are you going to be at the session? No. Uh, when is it? June. Yeah, I think yeah, it's changed. I think it's June now. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think I might be. I'm definitely doing Magic Live, so I'm going to be at Magic no, Live. I can't be at Magic Live, sadly. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gigging, but uh, I'm going to try and get to the session. I think. Well, if now I know you're there, that might be my, uh, that might definitely. be the reason to go, because it's a lot quieter, so you have more time at the session than at Blackpool, where it's just completely yeah, yeah. managed. A bit more social. Absolutely. Well, John. Thank you so much once again for jumping on and telling us all about the new products. I'm going to take it back into the studio and give it a full review. Everybody, the website's down below. Go and support John. Buy this stuff. It's amazing. I'm going to give it a performance and a review right now. John, one more time. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, and I hope it's a good review. Oh, it will be. Okay, so first of all, thank you, John, for the interview. I really appreciate it. He is a busy guy, and the fact that he found time to do that was incredible. He squeezed me in between other Zoom meetings. Um, and uh, let's take let's take a look at the two ebooks. I will tell you, even though I'm a huge Don Archer fan and I uh, I love his work, uh, this review is going to be a hundred percent honest, as I'm sure John would expect. So the first uh, the first ebook we're going to be looking at is three one one. Uh, which stands for three thoughts, one billet, one envelope. Now, both ebooks, I should mention to you, are very well put together. So they're very nice PDFs. Uh, they're illustrated where they need to be. Uh, it's very well written. It's it, they're just very good. I can't comment negatively on how the ebooks have been put together at all in any way, shape, or form. So three one one. We mentioned it in the in the um, in the interview, but basically. It is two methods to achieve a effect that John has been wanting to achieve for years, which is basically having three spectators write three different thoughts on one billet or one business card or something like that, put it into one envelope, and then be able to get that information very, very clearly and very, very easily. Three, one, one. That's basically what we have here. Now, there's two methods that are discussed. One that will require a little bit of prep to make and one that will be uh, a lot easier to make, right? Uh, so let's briefly discuss both methods without giving anything away. The first method is absolutely genius. Now, uh, John goes into great detail about how to actually make this gaff up. Uh, I made it up. It took me probably about... 40 minutes, bearing in mind I am the worst gimmick builder in the world. I'm good at roughing cards and that's about it. Uh, but I was able to make this in about 40 minutes. Uh, it just requires stuff that you'd have around the house. Actually, there was something I needed that I didn't have, but I got it off Amazon Prime next day delivery. And what you will end up with is a incredible prop that you can very easily see a magic company like Vanishing Ink or Penguin selling for actually a decent amount of money along with spare envelopes. This is a really good gaff. So what it is, is it's a stack of envelopes, right? And um, what the stack of envelopes does, you can show it from all sides very, very freely. Uh, you can you can bring out a stack of envelopes. You can be, have an elastic band around it. You can take the elastic band off. Uh, you give them, uh, you give three spectators a business card, you get them to write uh, three th thoughts down, one thought each, or, you know, if you're just performing one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't have to be three thoughts, it could be a drawing duplication, it could be anything. The point here is, I mean, you get John's routine for the three one one presentation, but the, the peak that we're talking about here, you could use in any context. So, you take your business card back, you openly put it in the top envelope, with no moves at all, you take that top envelope off, and you seal it, done. You then give them the envelope to hold in between their hands. It looks that clean. You then take the rest of the envelopes, you show them, you put them away, and now I've got access to all of the information. I've, I've seen all of the information, even though they put it in the, in the envelope, they held onto it, you showed the, uh, 
the stack of envelopes, you put them away very, very clean. Now, this is based on a principle that I hadn't seen before that John credits and explains, um, but he's built on it. And what he's done is evolved at an entire other level. He's made it a lot more impossible. I'm going to go on record as saying this is one of the best ways to get a peak that I've seen. Um, John uses it in a stage performance, but it could just as easily be used in a close-up performance. Absolutely not a problem at all. You just need to put the envelopes away into, uh, into a pocket and you are done. Or if you're on stage, you can put them into a case or you can put them behind a prop, anything that you want to, and you've got access to that information. The nice thing is it's pretty much, no, it is, it's, it's angle proof. It's incredibly easy to do. It's, it's very clean because they're holding onto the envelope in between their hands. Um, it doesn't look like you've done anything. And it's pretty much an instant reset. You'd have to like do one thing, which would take about five seconds, and then you could reset it again for the next table. So it's very practical. And, and what's nice about this is there's no going back. You know, like with a lot of the pig wallets, you put the, uh, the, the business card away in the, the envelope in, inside the wallet. And then you have to open up the wallet again to, for, you have to have a reason to open up the wallet to take another business card out or something like that. There's nothing like that in this. That's why I love it so much. It reminds me a little bit of the Mark Oberon, uh, uh, I think it was called the Insider maybe, I can't remember. That was really, really good as well. Different method, totally different thing. Uh, but it reminds me of that in that it's that clean. This is maybe a little bit cleaner than that because that was a stack of cards. While this is, you literally just take a card, put it in an envelope, and you're done. Uh, I'm going to do a quick performance of this so you can see exactly what it looks like. Uh, so let me do a performance of, of this particular routine so you can see the peak in action. And then we'll, uh, we'll move on to uh, wrapping up the review of the first ebook. Excellent. You okay, Matt? I am. So I've got a stack of envelopes. That's going to become important a little bit later on. And as well as the envelopes, I also have a business card available for weddings, anniversaries, bar mitzvahs, and birthday parties. I'll hurry up. Now, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to have you think of three random thoughts. So I'm going to write number one, number two, and number three on this card. Now, it's really important okay. that I look away. I don't want you to think I'm looking at what you're doing. I am looking away the entire time. Now, I'm going to ask you three random questions, and I want you to be completely honest when you answer these. Okay. Okay. So... Number one, what I want you to do, when I snap my fingers, you're going to think of an animal. It could be any animal. It could be something as big as an elephant or a dinosaur. It could be something as small as an ant. It's completely up to you. When I say animal, it could be a mammal, an animal, an insect, anything. Get that in your head right now. And if you write it next to number one, that would be great. And tell me when you're done. Yeah, done. Okay. And obviously you can tell everyone I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking anywhere near you. I'm looking away. Yeah. Now, the second thing I want you to think of has to have nothing to do with the thing that you've thought of in the first question. Okay. So take that thing that you thought of. Now you've written it down and push it out the way. Okay. Because the second question, it has to be completely unrelated to that. When I snap my fingers, you're going to think of a film. That could be a film that you love watching, a film you hate watching, a film you've seen a million times, a film you've never seen. It could be uh, one of the greatest films of all time or one of the worst films of all time. The only important thing is it has nothing to do with the first thing that you wrote down. Okay? Okay. Now. Now, very important, when you've wrote that down, tell me. Yeah. And has it got anything to do with what you first wrote down? No. No. So, for example, if you wrote down dog, you're not going to write down Benji. No. Uh, <laughs> show my age with Benji, aren't I? Benji, little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the final question is, uh, again, has to be completely unrelated to anything that you've done up until this point. Um, the final question is something that you eat. Okay, now it could be something you enjoy eating, something you hate eating. Obviously, I know you, so I know you're a vegetarian. So, you know, it could be something you love, something you hate. Um, something, you know, it, it's completely up to you, but it, it can't be related to what you wrote down in number one or number two. Okay. Have you got that? Got it. This will be interesting. Fantastic. So, if you give me the card, but upside down, because obviously if you give it me the other way around, it's not particularly impressive. Because <laughs> I can read exactly what you've done. And then what I want you to do is, uh, well, it's probably not very COVID friendly to lick it. So I'll tell you what, just hold it in between your hands. I can lick it. It's up to you. If you want to lick it, you can lick it. We know each other. We work with each other. I think we're all, all vaxxed. So it's not the first time I've licked it. 
We don't talk about that on camera. <laughs> you hold on to it in between your hands. There we go. Okay, sorry. So yeah. you, you would agree that there's no way that I could I, 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 I could know what you're thinking of because obviously you wrote it down, you showed yeah. the camera, yeah. which is why I got you to write it down so you could show the camera without saying it because if you say it out loud, I'd hear it and that's not magic, that's stupid. Yeah. Uh, and then you, we put it in an envelope, you're holding onto the envelope, there's no way I could know anything. No. So what I want you to do is I want you to construct a story in your head involving those three things. I want you to construct a story or an image in your head of those three things. So the image is in your head and that's really interesting. That's really interesting. It is really interesting because this image popped out to me immediately. The image is, <laughs> you're in like a field or outside, aren't you? Like in the jungle. Is that right? Is it? Is this image taking place in the jungle? <laughs> It is, isn't it? It's taking place oh, in the jungle. I'm, I'm right, right? Stop it. But hang on, what's really <laughs> weird is when I told you that, you instantly stopped thinking about the jungle and you started thinking about skyscrapers and stuff like that. And helicopters, there was a helicopter, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, this is kind of really interesting. Let's go back to the this jungle really thing. Annoying. Let's go back to the jungle thing. Oh, I know why you thought of the jungle thing. It's because you were thinking of... You didn't think of Lion King as the film, did you? You didn't think of Lion King as the film, but the reason right. you're thinking of a jungle is because the animal you thought of was a lion. Is that right? You thought of a lion? So the question is, why was he thinking of uh, skyscrapers? Because the film has something to do with skyscrapers, doesn't it? This is a film. I said you could, you could say something you like or you hate. This is a film you really like, isn't it? Yeah. You've watched it more than once. Uh, but I also feel like you hate it as well. Oh, is it because there were sequels that you didn't like as much as the original? Is that right? <laughs> That's it. I'm sensing like and hate at the same time. It's like there's inner turmoil. You watched the first one lots of times, but the sequels you didn't like as much. Is that right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm also seeing black leather. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> It's not that kind of movie. Really. No, 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 no. They don't have sequels. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking of Trinity's ass for a minute, weren't you? You were thinking of you were thinking of uh, the Matrix. Fucking hell. Yes. Stop yeah. it. That's 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 what I think of. Fucking hell when I think of Trinity's ass. Let's <laughs> let's go for the last one. Um, the last one was uh, okay. Imagine imagine eating it. You see, psychologically. I've got you on this because I said imagine eating it and you kind of have imagined eating it and you didn't pull up, I hate this face. So that tells me it's obviously something that you can eat and you're a vegetarian. So that, that, that takes steak out of the equation and sausages and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, so this is something you enjoy eating. This is something that you've eaten recently in the last week. You've had one of these. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pizza. All right. Yes. Woo! Mind reader extraordinaire. How the like these mind reading ones? I don't like. It's like he's in. Like <laughs> please don't say it's like he's in me. It's never like say. <laughs> never say. Never say it's like That's he's not in me. Possible. Like. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> So there you go. Doesn't that look super clean? I mean, it's amazing. It really is. So that's the um, uh, so that's that's the first method. The sef second method is more impromptu. And as John said in the interview, this is something that you could use to do uh, like a, a borrowed bill to impossible location or a signed card to impossible location or a burnt bill or something like that. There's a lot of different ways that you could actually use this principle that John's come up with. It's very, very clever. Uh, and works really, really well. And I think it will appeal to more people because it's a lot easier to make up than the first method. Uh, I personally, having read both methods, I preferred the first method, which is why I went to the time and effort to make up the first one. Uh, I probably wouldn't do the second one, but I could see the second one being more popular with a lot of people if that kind of makes sense. I just I just preferred the first one for my own personal use. So I'm not gonna perform the second routine. To be honest, it would look exactly the same as what you saw in the first routine. The only difference is there's only one envelope, not a stack of envelopes. So you'd have one envelope, you'd take your billet, you'd put it in there, you'd put it down, and then you've got access to the information. It's very clean, very clever. Uh, and it's nice that John has included two uh, sort of methods for achieving this, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, it's nice because I think that there are going to be some people that gravitate towards the second method, while there's going to be people like me that gravitate towards the first method. For me, the first method is super clever and it's just so easy to do and so logical. The method just completely makes sense and it's over before you've done anything. Um, I, I can incorporate this into any other routine I do and I'm, I'm good to go. So that is uh, that is three one one. So that's that's the whole thing. So you learn uh, in the ebook. You learn how to make the gaff that you just saw performance of. You get to s learn how to make the uh, uh, the necessary thing that you need to make in order to get the second 
uh, method working, which would probably take about two minutes. The first one took me about 40 minutes. The second one took about two minutes. And they're both real world practical ways of achieving a peak. Uh, John obviously performs on stage more than he does close up. So when he's doing his write up, he's talking more from a, uh, a stage point of view. But you know, it works just as well in the close-up environments as you saw in the presentation. Uh, this is, I think that I'm going to actually start using this peak in the real world. I really do. I think that uh, I, I, I really, really like this. Like, really like this. I'm going to give this 100%. Uh, if you're looking for a really cool way of peaking some information, and, and, and also John's presentation is in there as well, which is really great. I'm not using John's presentation because part of what you get when you get a John uh, a John Archer presentation is, uh, sorry, part of what you get when you buy a John Archer product is his presentation. So I don't want to give that away, but uh, you get you get all of that as well. So all in all, I'm going to give this first ebook 100%. It is brilliant. Now let's look at the second ebook. So the second ebook is called 10 Green Bottles. It's called 10 Green Bottles. And uh, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to see a full performance of this or any type of performance. And uh, that's not because I don't want to do it or I can't do it on camera. It's actually probably a lot easier to put together and do than the, uh, than the, the 311 that we just talked about. But the reason is, and you, you probably heard this if you listened to the interview with John, a big part of this is the presentation. And I don't want to give the presentation away by doing a full performance. And I think the only way that you can make sense of this trick is by doing the presentation that John gives as part of the routine. So to respect John's wishes, I'm not going to perform the trick. Okay, It's very rare that I don't perform the trick, but in this situation, I'm not going to perform the trick. However, I am going to talk to you about it. So the, uh, the, the routine is based on 10 green bottles. Or in America, uh, I think it's 99 green bottles, right? Now, he actually addresses that. And uh, he talks about how um, uh, you, 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 well, I don't want to say, but it, he addresses the fact that it's a slightly different song in America. And the whole idea is, uh, during the course of the presentation, you take out a green bottle, you put it down on the table. You take a billet out, uh, which is folded up, and you put that underneath the bottle, and it's right there. Very, very clean. The billet goes underneath the envelope. There's no ambiguity at all. There's no switches. There's no sleight of hand. It goes underneath that bottle. You then go through the presentation, and during the course of the incredibly wacky presentation that would be really funny, if you're working a bar or a restaurant, this would probably bring the house down, I'm telling you right now. If you're a restaurant performer, this is something that you really need to get. But during the course of the presentation, um, you're basically having them name a verse from the song. So if you think about it, there's like 10 verses, 10 green bottles, 10 green underwall. So you have, you have them name a verse and they have a free choice. That's very important. They have a free choice. There's no force. There's no limitations. Nothing like that. They name any verse that they want to. And when they name the verse, you then pick up the bottle and there's the billet that was there from the very beginning. There's the billet. Uh, you then give them the billet or they can pick up the billet themselves if they want to. And when they unfold it, you've predicted the verse that they would name from the song. OK, that's basically what we have here. Um, now, that's the routine and the switch, because there is a switch, even though it doesn't feel like there's a switch. I, I am 100 percent confident, by the way, that if I saw this in the real world and John performed this to me in a bar, this switch would fool the living crap out of me. Um, that I was so impressed when I saw the method and I've never seen anything like that before. So I think this would fool the hell out of me. Uh, but the switch is genius and it's so easy to do. Um, and the method, uh, like John said, there's uh, a synergy between the method and the presentation. It just makes total sense of this. Um, so, I mean, that's basically what it is. If you want to predict the verse of a song in 10 green bottles using a very wacky presentation, this is a way to do it. Um, you could incorporate this into a restaurant set if you're working in a restaurant. So for example, you could start off with a bottle production um, and make a bottle appear and then put that bottle down. And you could put a billet down underneath that bottle. Then during the course of the routine, you know, you do something else, you do something else. And at the end, 
you you do this presentation, you have the name of verse of the song and the billet that's underneath the bottle that's been there the whole time, predicts the verse that they would make. And it's nice because it's come full circle. So you've made the bottle appear at the beginning and then at the end, you've referenced what you put under the bottle at the very beginning. And I love it when acts come full circle like that. Um, however, as I mentioned to John, one thing that really struck out to me with this method is that you could use it for a card to impossible location. So you could very, very easily take a folded up card or take a card out the deck and fold it up, put it underneath a bottle. You could then have somebody pick a card. You could do whatever you want to do with that card, any presentation that you want to do. And at the end, when you pick up that bottle, the card, they pick it up themselves and they look at it and it's their folded up card. It's a way of doing a folded card to impossible location without any sort of boxes or containers or anything. You literally just put it under the bottle and pick it up. Now, if you're gonna do that, I would say that it's probably best that you come up with a justification for the bottle. I wouldn't just wanna do this by saying, let's just take a random bottle and put it on top of a, a card. I don't think that would work. But if you can come up with a, a justification for that bottle, um, then I think this would be absolutely amazing. And that's what John's done in the, in the manuscript. What John's done in the ebook is the presentation that he's put together for this, uh, what is in essence a switch, really kind of justifies the use of the bottle. So I wanted to put out there that you can use this for a card to impossible location, but I think it would be really important to justify the bottle. Although having said that, you know, we don't justify half the props we use, do we? Anybody who uses, you know, uh, John Kennedy's mystery box, for example, they don't justify the wooden box, they just put it down. So maybe it's just like, hey, look, I've made this bottle up here, let me just put it on top of the card. Maybe you don't need to justify it, I don't know. It depends on your performance, uh, your performance character, it depends on you as a performer. But one thing that I would say, and one thing that I want you to understand, is that this has been marketed as a billet routine. And it is a billet routine, and it's a very good billet routine. However, there's a lot more you could do with it, like a lot more, because you basically have here a method where you can very cleanly, with no sleight of hand, put something underneath the bottle, and then later on you can pick that bottle up and it's switched with almost no moves. Um, so you could do bill to impossible location. Imagine having a bill that you put underneath there. Um, and you have a bill that's signed and it ends up being the bill that was underneath there. Or how about borrowing a bill and having them fold it up and putting it underneath the bottle and then you've switched it without them realising it. So now you can do a serial number divination uh, or, or the serial number matches the cards that have been dealt out onto the table. I mean, the possibilities with this concept that John has put, uh, put together here is brilliant. And that's why this ebook is going to get such a high mark. If it was just the trick, it's a really good trick, uh, like it's a really good trick. Um, but the concept in here, the, the, the switch that John has put together for this trick has so many more possibilities that I just think this is something that we're going to see a lot with magicians moving forward. I think that there's going to be a lot of smart magicians that take this switch and really run with it. And it's for that reason that I'm going to give this 100% because I think it's really, really good. Uh, and I think that uh, I, I think that I'm going to be playing around with this switch in in a few different ways, and I've got a few different ideas that I'm going to be using it for, and it's all because of John. So there you go. That's that's the ten green bottles. It's a really great trick. It's a really great presentation. It's a freaking awesome switch, but it has way more possibilities than the ebook actually goes into. Basically, the ebook is the tip of the iceberg. So there you go, guys. Uh, that is another review show special in the bag. Uh, don't forget that you can order these directly from John Archer's website. That is the only place that you can order these if you want these two ebooks. They are inexpensive, and supporting John is a nice thing to do because he is such a good guy. Uh, thank you very much to John Archer for doing the interview, and thank you very much for being just an awesome guy. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have these ebooks? What's your thoughts? Inquiring minds want to know. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, all you've got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow uh, with three videos. I'm going to be back with three videos on a Monday. Uh, nine o'clock, we're going to have a... Uh, what are we having at nine o'clock? Nine o'clock, we're going to have a uh, five by five. Two o'clock is a shorts. Six o'clock is a live. So there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up this week. But one more time, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic.
TV.